evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Reveal Report. I'm your host, George Iceman, and I thank you for joining us on this amazing weekend. We're going to kick it off. It's the October season. Some say it's the season of the witch. Halloween. Today is October 13th, a Friday. Interesting show, guys, and we appreciate you guys being here as we continue our series about witches and witchcraft. And today, the topic is modern-day witches, sorcerers. Do we have some in Hollywood, in the movies, on television? It's unbelievable what we have to talk about today. And again, I thank you all for joining us. Please like, subscribe, and share uh, to participate in the chat. You have to be a subscriber. Thank you for being a Twitter follower, a Patreon supporter, and of course, watching here on YouTube. It's much appreciated. We discuss, if you're new to the show, things about the occult, the supernatural, the paranormal, the esoteric, the strange, the weird. So we thank you all for being here and um, get ready. Get your popcorn, get your coffee, get your tea, uh, because we're going to get into it. I'd like to welcome my co-host and author from several books, Miss Jesse Zabolder. Jesse, how are you? Hey, good, George. Well, we're getting into it. Modern day yeah. witches. Who are they? Do they exist? And I think the most popular figure that has been seen in the news, in commercials, she even graces front covers. She hosts private parties. She's associated with many celebrities, including politicians. She is very, very artistic. She calls herself an artist. But is she? That's the question we pose today. I want to discuss this particular individual, and her name is Marina Abramovich. She claims that she is an artist, and she's extremely artistic. And she has been in the news several times, including recently. But you'll never know what she was in the news about. So I'm going to share this clip to give a little bit of context to it. And then I'll get your opinion on what we just heard. This is the most recent news regarding Maria Abramovich. Is she an artist or which? Check this out. Zelensky has hired an actual witch to be his ambassador. You might say, Michael, witches aren't real. First of all, witches are real. But second of all, even if witches weren't real, this is a woman who does very explicit occult activities of witches. Even, even if you don't think witches are real, this woman does think witches are real. And Zelensky just hired her to be an ambassador, to be a face of the country. It's not even like hiring her to be the cook though she's very good at spirit cooking. It's not even like hiring her to go do some back office accounting or something. When you are an ambassador, you your entire job is to be the face of your country, to represent your country around the world or around various sectors. And he's hired a witch. Her name is Marina Ibramovich. You've probably heard that name because of the WikiLeaks emails from the Podesta brothers. Remember, Tony Podesta, very powerful lobbyist and art collector and all-around creep if you look into the kind of art he collects and uh, affairs that he's involved in. And John Podesta was running Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016, and there was a WikiLeaks email inviting John from by, by Tony to a spirit cooking dinner led by Abramovich. And spirit cooking is just an occult, satanic ritual. Thoughts on that context, Jesse? You know, she definitely has, you know, claimed to be a witch and she engages in witchcraft and different forms of occultic activity. Um, you know, he certainly mentioned the very last thing, the spirit cooking, which, you know, we really can't talk about much on this show. Um, but, you know, what is it in general? It's just, you know, in her art, she presents um, different forms of occultic activity that include, you know, blood or the consumption of flesh. Um, so there's things like that, that she engages in with her parties and different things that they'll, um, present that as, um, 
you know, I know that she's definitely connected to, you know, elite high priestesses in the system. Uh, far before, you know, Zelensky ever came to ask her if, if she would be his ambassador, you know, she was highly involved with um, leaders of other countries and, you know, pretty involved in the system, I'll say. Marina Abramovich, ladies and gentlemen, here she is. She was born uh, in Serbia. She's Serbian and she's considered a performance artist. Um, she has been around a very long time. She was born November 30th, 1946, Belgrade, Serbia. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman is 76 years of age. 76 for her age, George, doesn't she? She does not look 76. Now, either she has the most unbelievable genetics and skin I've ever seen, or she has an amazing um plastic surgeon. I've never seen one almost 80 I, years of age. Well, it can't be the second thing because you know, the one thing with plastic surgery that they can't really work on is the neck. And, you know, look how youthful and young her neck looks. And I think that that has to do with some of the things that she consumes. Now, I have to say, I I'm quite shocked with her because of her look. Yeah. I mean, she does not look 76, almost 80. She looks, you know, youthful. Is that a recent picture, though? Let me start that, with that, George. That was probably a year <laughs> ago or so. That was probably a year ago. Well, that was just a year ago? I believe, okay. I believe so. I'll give her the good looks then for that. And... Let's look at some of her photos because, again, it sends off red flags to me, to me, mm -hmm. former occultist. But again, I got to give the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she is just poking the bull. She is an artist and yeah, she wants yeah. people talking about her. That is a possibility. We have to pose that, yeah. that she could be completely innocent and says, I'm going to mess with these people. So let me share some of her visuals. Take a look. Yeah, it I says mean, which pretty blatant, pretty blatant right there. And I just have to clarify, I'm seeing a lot in the chat, but um, she definitely is a she. So I just have to clarify that she is there a she. Go. Here's another picture. Interesting. Yeah, the, the bull's horns. head or the, oh, the goat horns. Or maybe goat. I think it's a goat. Yeah, goat horns. There's the goat horns. Interesting. Here's one that's very witchy. <laughs> she's levitating over some pots and pans. Look, she's doing magic cleaning, George. You know, I, you, I just you need to teach that skill. I think I don't know. What do you? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I mean, say that jokingly. <laughs> I, I get it, but this is disturbing. Performance art, but she's posing to have supernatural powers. This is what this picture tells me. Her hands are spread out. She's levitating. She's floating. Supernatural powers. Now, again, it could be artistic, but she's putting something out there. I yeah. find it interesting, Jesse. And the picture that I find the most disturbing is this one. Yep, with good old Rothschild, but a very she's, particular painting behind them. That's a very expensive ancient painting. And that painting, I'll let everybody know, is actually Lucifer. Mm -hmm. In the back, that's the portrayal of Lucifer. Strong, dominant, as you can see, powerful. And posing in front is Marina Abramovich and Rothschild. Now, let us be quite frank here. You have to be an extremely powerful, popular human being to get anywhere next to Rothschild. I mean, think well, about it. We're in his magic circles, George. I, I think quite a bit of people have access to him. No, who's quite a few? Do you have access to him? Are you going to take pictures next to him in front of that uh, picture? Well, no, not in front of that oh. picture. No, I'm just teasing. Yeah, he's a very powerful guy. Yeah. Those people watching here, I don't think you're going to bump into him anywhere in public. Nope. And the fact that she's with him tells me she's very influential. In fact, quite possibly... Marina Abramovich could be one of the most powerful women with the most influence in the world. 
She's associated with celebrities, politicians. She graces the cover of many magazines. She holds special seminars, private functions that not anyone can attend. Yeah. So this woman is powerful, but is a performance art or is she in fact a witch? We talk about spirit cooking. What is spirit cooking? Well, I have a video that comes right from her. I want to share it with everybody. Now, some of you might be disturbed by the visuals you're going to see. So I'm letting you know in advance. Here's a video that she made herself about spirit cooking. Here it is. Dentro With a sharp knife cut into your middle finger in your left hand and swallow the pain. Interesting, she says the left hand. For those who don't know, I would like to remind you that when you take the side of dark magic, when you start to dabble, and I wouldn't shouldn't say dabble because once you get into it, you're in it, and you conduct rituals and you're making deals with demons, that is called the left hand path. You are taking the left hand path to the left. It's very interesting. So they specifically mentioned that in the cutting of the hand. A lot of magic you see is done on the left hand path with the left hand. We talk about Kabbalah with the red string on the left hand. There is more to this, but we're not going to get into that today. But we will get into the meaning of that left and right. It's key and it's meaning and it's biblical. But there it is. The spirit cooking. Is it artistic or is it magic? That's what we need to ask. She portrays a witch, but says she's an artist. It's kind of like a modern day Blavatsky. For those who don't know, that's someone mm -hmm. I had to study in magic. Blavatsky uh, was another um, um, immigrant to America um, that came from a circus. And she participated in divination and a type of witchcraft and communicating with the dead came to be a, a somewhat of a, a mother figure in the occult. Very rare to get her book signed. If someone has it, I'll be shocked. Message me. It's, it's, it's very rare to get anything from Blavatsky. Mostly universities have her books, her texts, and her, her, her actual signature. Anyways, I'm comparing because it looks like Marina Abramovic is today's generation of Blavatsky or even an Aleister Crowley. Thoughts on that, Jesse? I, I think it's very plausible. And, you know, I think that what we see her engaging in is kind of a mixture of different forms of, um, you know, not necessarily scrying, but 
there's different ways of communicating, you know, with the dead or with beyond in other places. And we know that, you know, when you're writing in blood or putting something up in blood that includes words or a personal identifier, um, you know, that then becomes a contract. So the fact that, you know, even though it seems like it's in general, she said, you know, giving these instructions, is that coming through a spirit that she's writing down? Is it connected to a grimoire that she's created that, you know, is connected to blood magic? Um, you know, what is the contract and who is that with? She doesn't clarify that. Um, yet, you know, we know from both picture evidence as well as deeper things that we've seen about her that, you know, she's in deep and, um, you know, I certainly would not be trusting or following any instructions that she puts up. Well, she is the public figure. Yeah. Uh, occultically, I, I don't believe she is like answering to someone specifically in a group. She could be the head of her own coven, uh, but she is definitely a powerful figure. When celebrities, artists, and those in politics start to invite you and you start to hang out with them, you're on a whole other level. You're a completely different level. Uh, usually that's not um, a thing. It's usually secretive. Uh, we never see the super high ups. But again, this could be the modern day Blavatsky, possibly the new breed on how they flaunt it publicly to let you know. It's a new technique they could be trying. I don't know. However, from the kind of art that I witness, from what she talks about, it seems like witchcraft. Yeah. Now, she's been training people in Hollywood, Jesse. And yeah. one of those people is Kim Kardashian. Or at least she's somewhat associated with Kim Kardashian. Um, I found some very strange things in regards to them. Uh, some people are saying Kim Kardashian. Well, you know, Kim is quite popular on television and has her own series, clothing line, a lot of influence. And digging deep, you know, to see Kim. I found this photo of her with Marina Abramovich. Now, there's a few other circulating. Interesting. Maybe they just bumped into each other at the same party. But maybe, maybe it's the same hotel. Who knows? You never know. Here's some interesting comparisons with outfits. Kim Arena. Kim Kardashian. Is she a witch? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been reading, I've been looking into this, and it seems that her bloodline goes back very old time, maybe gypsy days, dealing with witches. In fact, her grandmother, Helen, supposedly did some type of ritual work. Now, I found a, an interesting video uh, on this about how her and her bloodline cursed all men in their lives. Interesting. So good. <clears throat> I'm going to let the video do the talking. So I'm going to play it. I want you to take a listen to what this individual has to say because I was quite shocked. And I was like, huh, is this real? Could this be? Let's take a look. Here it is. Kardashians cursed all the men in their lives. It was alleged that a woman who was an ancestor of the Kardashians sacrificed her soul to four witches in Armenia in order for all the women in her bloodline to always have fame, fortune, and beauty while the men around them suffer. Just to take a look at a few of them, Scott Disick, who went from being a relatively successful businessman to developing severe alcoholism and depression in front of the whole world. Travis Scott, who went from having the number one album in 2018, then becoming the most hated and disgraced artist of all time, and not releasing an album since. Caitlyn Jenner, who ruined her relationship with Chris and her children, and later got ostracized by her own community. Kanye West, from being at the top of his career, to being locked in a mental hospital, and running his 2020 presidential run. 
Pete Davison, now undergoing trauma therapy after the negative media attention from being with Kim. With all that said, it isn't really a long shot to say that. Did somebody in her family, supposedly her grandmother Helen, possibly make a deal with these four witches for fame, fortune, protection? But a sacrifice has to be made in some way, shape, or form. Destruction of all these men's lives, the taking of the soul, the controlling, the power. Now, as I dig deeper into this, I find out that she's publicly come out to talk about magic and sorcery. She talked about using voodoo. Her own sister on a TV show accused her of being a witch. Now, that could be taken out of context. She's just saying it like she's so angry. Possible. Yeah. Or was she actually speaking of her as a witch? She also, in a show, fed her family her placenta. Well, that's a little bit disgusting, if you ask yeah. me. She loves to wear these very strange black outfits. But she talks about this and magic. She talks about having magic in your life and manifestation. Here's a clip of her discussing this. And then I'll get your take on it. Here it is. I kind of still believe in Santa because you, ha you have to believe in magic. Those that don't believe in magic will never find it. There's a lot of magic that has happened in my life. People always ask, how did you do this? And I'm just like, a little bit of magic played a role in that too. A little magic played a role in that too. Thoughts on Kim Kardashian. Do you think this is performance art? Is she just getting people riled up? Or does she truly believe in magic and practices rituals? I, I personally think she truly believes in it. You know, I believe that her family are highly involved in the system. And I know, you know, Kanye West, at least, um, he was coming out about some of the things uh, that they were engaged in. And I think that's part of his story on where he is right now. You know, as long as he was playing along with the game and uh, being part of the system, things were, you know, going kind of well. Um, then he attempted to get out and then we saw things go to hell for him. Then we see him back uh, doing <laughs> some more ritual things like an uh, emulation ritual with her, you know, where he set himself on fire. So, you know, it's just been extreme in that family. I think that, you know, we can say there definitely has been things connecting them to witchcraft. Shocking, shocking, shocking. I, I mean, there's too much there to say she's not a witch. Maybe yeah. she's a high up witch. I mean, look at who she's surrounded by. And everyone around her, movie. including men, are cursed. Her sister as well does some very strange videos, uh, wears very strange outfits. And there's just something that's not right. Why would you want to talk about magic and manifestation? This is something that has to do with magic manifesting things to come to your fruition, to come to your desire. You, you want your desire to come true. Many people practice it. Um, I, I know that from, from my old days uh, it doing magic, that that's one of your things is your manifestation, wishing upon it, doing certain things to make it happen. These people do these things. Now she's getting quite popular with a new show. She came out and started to act in a hit series that is known for controversy and the occult. Very occultic storylines and characters. It's called the American Horror Story. She acts in this. I want to play a clip from the trailer. Get your comment on it and get everyone to take a look at this because it's interesting. And it reminds me of a movie that was done very long ago. Take a look. Do you want an Oscar? Do you want it as much as a baby? Yes. I don't understand the urge to create an unnecessary child who feeds on your body. Something's happening to me. Pain is the touchstone of growth.
Do you want an Oscar? Elements in there. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you want an Oscar? Do you want a child? Fame, fortune, interesting. She comes to have it, this child. Now, I haven't seen the series, but I can tell you from afar what this reminds me of. There's magic, there's witches, there's sorcery, there's rituals. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be a modern take on a very interesting movie that was made in the 70s in New York City that has to do with the Antichrist. And it was called Rosemary's Baby. Some say the greatest, one of the greatest horror movies ever made. I've done a show about this, and a lot of the cast were cursed from this movie. You need yeah. to go back and see it. I have it posted on Rumble because it was too much for YouTube. So go to Rumble on my channel, The Reveal Report, to look at that episode as I talk about Rosemary's Berry. Now, do you think this episode has anything to do with that? The way the trailer works, they're trying to get her to bear a child, but using magic, part of a coven. Will they use manifestation and do things to have this child possibly be not human? Thoughts on that, Jesse? They could. I mean, they've been trying that for years and, you know, we know there's certainly been special projects or connections, um, you know, with witch, witchcraft trying to procure um, chosen ones or people with special gil skills or abilities, things like that. So, you know, it definitely could be a show on that. It's just interesting that Kardashian is involved in that. Well, it's called The American Horror Story. Kim Kardashian is in it. I find it interesting because of her association with magic, her coming out publicly about magic, her discussing it. Yeah. Now, that's just one associated to Marina Abramovich. I don't know if she was trained by her or so forth. Did she attend any of her parties? But she quite possibly could be a modern day witch. Here's a picture of her family, her ancestors, and her grandmother, Helen, who supposedly participated in magic. They look like gypsies, George. They do, don't they? Interesting. <laughs> Again, we can only know what we know. But that pegs the question, are there more people in Hollywood, in the music industry, in politics, maybe that can be modern day witches? Does this even exist? Of course it exists. And we talk about some of you, come on, George. It doesn't exist. I'm telling you. Biblically, they discuss this. They talk about this. Take a look at this. Latimari, th th this is a very important context. Let no one be found among you who sacrifice their son or daughter in the fire, who practice divination or sorcery interrupts omens, engages in witchcraft, Deuteronomy. So it talks about this. People did this back then. Yeah. This existed. It's in the Bible, folks. So are there any other people that could be a modern-day witch? I mean, here's someone that she trained, Marina Abramovich. I want you to take a look. <laughs> Tell me what you think and your thoughts. Here it is. Lady Gaga. Some chanting, some interesting things. Again, in the wilderness, in the forest. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Jesse? Well, I, you know, we see that hierarchy structure in training, both in witchcraft, but among the priestesses within the system. 
you know, it's common to have a teacher, a mentor, and then they're going to have individuals who are students. What we see at the very beginning that, um, you know, that she's wearing, usually you you don't see the divination mask with, you know, two um, cones where the eyes are, but um, it looks to be a form of divination mask, which they'll wear um, when they're trying to connect in the spirit world visually. Um, you see some of the different things that they're doing, uh, where you have, you know, in the chairs, one's above, one's legs are below, uh, you know, emulating some of the beliefs that are done as people are trying to summon spirits and different types of forms of magic that they're doing. So, you know, that's what that looked like. It looked like it was a, she was training to, to be a priestess. Training to be a priestess. I mean, fascinating stuff. I will say she has some very strange performance art on her shows. We've discussed this. Some might call it evil, demonic even. There is saying that her assistant even wanted to take her to court, said that she couldn't sleep alone, that she would have her sleep with her in bed because she was scared to be alone in the dark. I would be scared if Marina was my teacher too. <laughs> huh. <laughs> right? I mean... Who knows what she would pop in and do <laughs> once you know she's got, you know, access to you in the spirit world. There is many people here with a crazy conspiracy, Jesse. We need to nip it in the bud. I would like to get your opinion. You're reading the comments. Some don't think she's a, a woman. I think it was pretty clear, George, that both of them are women. But They are women. So you guys yeah. got to be careful with the spreading of the words and, and, and the conclusions of she's not a woman. The stories that I've heard from her past, she was a woman. She is a woman, ladies and gentlemen. And some people like to talk about that she's not or this or that. So we just want to try and be clear. Um, you might in your own mind think she's not, but yeah, she there, is a there's woman. more artwork that they have you know, in the nude and stuff for both of them that definitely show they are women. She is a woman. Or she wouldn't be able to get into that certain, that certain maybe coven to participate in certain things. So um, she is definitely doing certain things that are not normal. The humming, the chanting, the outside uh, forest, uh, the water there with uh, Abramovich. What is she learning? What is this? I believe it's called the Abramovich method. But there's no real context to what this does. She came up publicly and thanked her. Oh, my goodness. Uh, very, very strange. So here's the question, Jesse. I'll come right out and ask you. Do you believe, in your opinion, from what you've seen in the past and what you've learned from others, that Lady Gaga could possibly be a witch, possibly very high up. Um, as I stated, I think she is higher than a witch. I think she is a priestess, um, you know, and she was studying under Marina, who's a high priestess. Um, so I think that, you know, they're both pretty high level within the system. They're both and maybe we should clarify, you know, for those who don't know, you know, both priestesses and witches practice different forms of witchcraft. Um, maybe the lower end of witches, you're going to get more of those that focus on just the light types of mag magic. So your Wicca, different forms like that. You may get the hoodoo, the voodoo for those who are dark side. But for high priests and priestesses, that's where they're going to get into the Solomonic, the, the Enochian, and um, you know, the Gaotian, the Thelemic forms of ma magic. So they'll get into the higher stuff and be working with higher level demonic spirits in their summoning. It's perplexing. People don't want to think this exists. Publicly, ladies and gentlemen, they've come out and discussed this. We've talked about this on many different shows. Could they possibly be a witch? You know? 
um, there's so many different scenarios and so many different people. Here's a interesting photo of Madonna posing like Baphomet. Now that could be artistic and part of the show, but what a coincidence. What are your thoughts? Do you believe Madonna is a high priestess, witch, sorcerer that practices divination? I believe just like uh, Marina and Lady Gaga that Madonna, you know, is high priestess level. Um, I think that she's connected to the grand dames in the system, meaning, you know, her job is going to be to uh, work with certain younger celebrities, to go with them to parties, um, to help those celebrity girls be escorts uh, for high-end priests or priestesses in the system. So, you know, it's kind of her job to help train escorts and stuff. I, you know, I believe that that outfit that she's wearing is much more than just symbolizing the Befa mat. You know, where that comes from, that imagery, it comes from uh, Ricard Wagner's um, The Song of the Valkyrie. And that was used a lot in Nazism um, as a victory song or as imagery of, um, Nazi women who were going into battle. Um, so I think that, you know, beyond the Befa mat, that that outfit she's wearing has much more meaning to it. And later we see her in full, you know, uh, Nazi command, female commander clothing, um, you know, at the Grammys and stuff a, a year or two later. So. Another interesting individual celebrity that practiced the occult ritual magic for those who might not know was david bowie here's a picture of david take a look that's david bowie and to the other side that's alistair crawley doing the osiris the lima style magic i believe there they are he absolutely positively believed in magic in fact Found a clip on it. Somebody talking about it did some very good uh, description. So I'll play it because I thought it was pretty good with context. Here's David Bowie, what they thought or what they dug up about him. Here it is. David Bowie was known for filling his cocaine into sleepless nights, pouring through books on the occult. The musician's thin white Duke persona was even taken from a line in Aleister Crawley's book of poetry, White Stains. Bowie was also influenced by Kabbalah, a philosophy rooted in Judaism, while simultaneously fascinated by the magical symbology of the Nazis, which almost derailed his career. His friend Glenn Hughes of the band Deep Purple once said, Bowie felt inclined to go on very bizarre tangents about Aleister Crawley or the Nazis or numerals a lot. He traveled straight into the heart of psychic darkness, lost in his own world. Bowie even once saw his pool bubble and was so certain that it was possessed that he had it exercised. And after a fight with Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page, he became so terrified that Page would summon demons that he kept anything that might be used against him, including urine and nail clippings. He was so scared that he would save that stuff as to not let one of the members of Led Zeppelin cast negative demonic spells on them. Now, we've done a show on Led Zeppelin, um, again, on the Rumble channel because we couldn't keep it on YouTube. And I went into it and discussed the different elements that occurred. In fact, they went out and bought Aleister Crawley's house. If you're new here and who's Aleister Crawley, guys, <laughs> you're going to have to go back and watch a lot of videos. Uh, they say he's the most dangerous uh, beast, the dangerous man uh, who ever lived. Um, uh, this is him, Aleister Crawley. In fact, he was such an influence on pop culture that he even appeared on the Beatles album. How about that? He appeared on the Beatles album. Aleister Crawley inspired many different artists, musicians, and individuals. His magic. Very, very strange. Is there others, you might ask, Jesse? Are there others that practice magic in Hollywood? Well, I dug in and found a couple more. Let's share it with you. We've talked about this one before, but let's do a recap on Megan Fox. Here it is. 
Megan Fox caused quite a stir in 2022 when she told Glamour UK that she and her twin flame, Machine Gun Kelly, drink each other's blood. It's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes. Like many modern witches, Fox is also into meditation, astrology, and tarot card readings, revealing, I do rituals on new moons and full moons and all these things. She's even shared an Instagram photo of some of her witchy reading material, Moon Spells by Diane Alquist. 